My name's Nathan. I'm honored to talk with you guys on Kinder Connect, <laughs> through the Kinder Connect app. Um, and yeah, I'm an artist, uh, but I, I work in visual effects. So that's how I make my money as a freelancer, which means that I get actually a fair bit of time to in between jobs to do my passion, which is figurative arts. And that means painting the figure or drawing the figure. And um, I, I'll do that a couple times a week, at least, working with a model either live or over Zoom. So that's what I'm really passionate about. I've been doing that. I've been doing that seriously, I guess, for the last sort of like three or four years, but I've always drawn since I was a little kid. And, um, and yeah, I, 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 know, I know Gina through a mutual friend, I guess we were introduced to each other. We met, we met at that weird like uh, installation this like weird color installation, which is it's, it's just worth going to. Um, super fantastic um, experience. But I told her about Art Jam there and then she came and joined and now she's an addict, which is great. She's got a great energy. So, um, so she knows what Art Jam is. Um, so, but yeah, I'll talk, I'll talk a little bit more. I'll lead into Art Jam in a minute. Uh, if anyone is curious about my process as a as an artist like I can talk a little bit about that um so maybe I'll spend like just sort of five minutes kind of gliding through some some pieces here that I've like pulled out um so I, I started out drawing just as a kid scribbling and copying from photos and cartoons that I really liked. And, um, and I think I started doing that because it, it, gave me, it gave me a lot of attention, mostly from my grandmother, my parents, and my friends. And so I, I have fond memories of hanging out, drawing, and even cheating, like tracing, to make it look as good as I could get it to look. And then running off to show my grandmother what I'd done, and then she would be like, "Oh, well done!" And I would get a little ego boost from that. <laughs> and then later on in life, I was getting a little bit more serious into drawing the figure, and so I would draw people on the train and on the bus and stuff, and I would just try to capture them and their essence as much as possible. Maybe I would do some caricature style stuff, very illustrative, illustrative stuff. I was very experimental and I never really liked doing anything that was like too photo real or too tight. I always liked to keep things really, really loose because I liked to express some energy. I like to see some energy in the work. And then, um, and then I went through a little bit of a period, like, I guess like last year, of just kind of, mainly around the pandemic just kind of like hitting a bit of a bottom with stuff and not think not not being sure what I wanted to do exactly with my work and so to pull myself out, out of that funk I took a trip to Europe and I took a really short week-long course in pastel because before pastel I'd never really done color work and I felt like that was something that was really missing from my life was the color and it kind of felt symbolic that I needed to bring some color into my life, you know, and, and kind of shake things up a bit. And it really, it really worked doing that. I think it's not, it's nice to look back that I held back for so long from doing color. And then eventually, you know, when I really needed it to be in my life, it came into my life. And so that was, that was last year when I started working with pastels and and that gave me a lot of momentum sort of spiritually i guess or emotionally gave me a lot of momentum and so when i came back from europe i wanted to do something with a community or with friends really at first and there's a space in the place that i live and meredith lives here as well uh, there's this workshop area that's 
available for the residents to use. It's a large space and you can fit maybe, I don't know, comfortably like 50 people in there or so. So, so I thought it would be nice to get a hold of a bunch of canvases, four feet by three feet. So they're quite, they're quite large, I guess. Um, and invite a bunch of people around to, to paint on them. And at first we just sort of like, I think we just sort of played around, um, but then quickly decided that it would be fun to paint over each other's work and do it to these time constraints. You know, and it, it becomes a little bit of a party. We have some music and we have some pizza and some like drinks and stuff to like loosen up and make it kind of a social thing. But um, it ends up, it ended up being being something a lot kind of deeper and transformative than just a party where we're playing around with paint. Although it is that, and that is on its own super meaningful and super fun. So that's what we do. That's what our jam is. It's it's six or seven canvases lined up against the wall and paint and materials and tools and a bunch of people show up and we all hit the canvas. <laughs> and so uh, maybe six or seven people will, will pick a canvas. I'll set a timer and five minutes will go by and you can do whatever you want in those five minutes. And then when the timer goes, everyone is to step back and either move to a fresh canvas or let someone else jump on if it's a, you know, if it's a busy night. And we rotate like that, paint, painting over each other's work as we go. So that becomes that becomes both fun and and really challenging. Um, and it's just it's a it's a beautiful thing to see, and it's really fun for me to try to shake people out of their paralysis that sets in. And we'll talk a little bit about what happens in, in the process of jamming for art jammers. <laughs> and yeah, so, we, so we, we're gonna try to talk a little bit about this idea of egolessness in art or maybe like taming the ego might be a better way to put it. Um, because I wanna talk about how bringing in certain constraints into your process, into your creative process, no matter what it is that you do, if you bring in certain constraints, to, like certain pressures, it kind of forces you into, eventually forces you into a bit of a flow state where you can't be very attached to what it is you're doing because of these playful pressures. If there are to the right amount of pressure, it's really fun. If it's too much, of course, it's just pressure and stress. But the right amount, I think it's good. So we play around with these variables sometimes, the art jam. Um, so the aim is to try to let go of the ego and make this, this kind of art that's egoless or that transcends ego somehow. Um, because I think we'd all like to, I think we'd all like to make art or at least live in a way um, that's free from those parts of our ego that are actually holding us back from doing something true and beautiful and meaningful and that, that gives to other people. Um, and some of the obstacles there are going to be, and th this is what, this is what comes up in uh, our jam. I think you, you, as a participant, especially for the first time, you come up against either a blank canvas or a canvas that's even worse, it's got something on it that either you don't like or you do like. And this kind of chatter starts to come into your head where you're like, what do I do? What do I do here? How am I, what am I supposed to do in five minutes? And what do I pick? What do I use? What's, what's the tool? And should I even do anything? like? this is pretty good or 
how am I going to make this? How am I going to fix this? Or, you know. And it also leads to, uh, I find people, I think, comparing themselves to other people, which leads to some negative emotions around like embarrassment or judgment or jealousy or shame or fear or, or something. And that kind of paralyzes you and stops you from, you know, wanting to do anything. You might, you might start thinking, you know, I shouldn't paint over this because it's going to offend someone, you know, or you, or you do something and then you step away from it. And then like, you're on another canvas, but you're looking at the side of your eye at someone else coming in onto what was your canvas. And so one other obstacle is, is this clinging or this attachment to outcome. And we get so concerned about doing something good or technically strong or beautiful that it gets in the way of, of the making, of the doing, of the experience. And so I think that's, that's, what, we're, that's what we're trying to push for with our jam and what I try to push for myself in my experience of being an artist is being outside of those obstacles so I can just be free. Um, and we can just be free to play, do, do what we want, make something beautiful. Yeah, a, 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 a different ways that we can overcome those obstacles I think are with like the time constraints. I really like to draw the figure with time constraints. So, so often these, these images that you're seeing up here are gonna be layers of one minute long line drawings and color, color applications of the color. So it ends up being, you know, forcing me to draw really quickly, forcing me to th think or even not think really and just rely on the practice that I've done to make these choices that are under a little bit of pressure. And it makes me focus on the whole picture. It forces me to kind of like, just think about the whole picture, be engaged with the process, not think too much about what, where it's all gonna go and if it's gonna look cool or, or not. And I find that like the more, the more that I do that, the more chance that it is that I make something that feels right, whether it's weird or what it doesn't, you know, if it, if it, it just feels more right. Doing something with others present is also a really nice pressure. And so I'll draw once a week with a group on Zoom where we all share our work at the end of it. That's hosted by um, someone who I, I would consider a mentor. His name's Martin Campos, and he's the one who ran the course in Pastel. So he's a really interesting character. And the way he draws the figure is, to me, very exceptional. And although he's, he's got his anatomy down, he, he will often avoid drawing the details, like hands and heads and things that are you know, that have to be perfect, he'll draw them off. And for some reason it just works. And I love that. <laughs> so that's something that I try to push for both in my work and through art jam. So that pressure of like, that pressure of being in a group and sharing with people, it allows you to get kind of loose and used to the idea of making something, showing it to others hearing the silence or hearing the praise or hearing the criticism or feeling it somehow and not being too attached to that. The more you do that, the more it kind of frees you up to not be afraid of making that, that work. Um, and the other part of this that I wanted to discuss was murdering this saying who it's not that popular murdering your darlings um 
it's not that well known as of a saying, but it basically means once you've done something that you really like and think is really cool, getting used to wiping that away or letting it go. So often in my own work, I'll, I'll scrub something out and um, make room for something else to be there. So you can see on something like this, there's a couple of different layers that are there. So the, 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 the journey that this went through is that these, that these works went through is like multiple layers. And I think it, it, I think it looks fun more than anything. It looks like I've been having fun and I have been having fun doing that. And it's kind of similar with Archam. I'll show you some, some process pictures with Archam. But here's a couple of paintings that will take a picture in between every, every layer. So it starts off blank and then someone comes on and, and paints whatever they fucking want to paint, right? Um, and the next person will add to that. The next person will add to that. So that's five minutes and there's another five minutes. There's another five minutes and you can see like someone's even punched a hole. This is a hole that someone <laughs> ripped into the canvas. Um, people, people literally do whatever they want on the canvas. Some people take it, take it outside, spray paint it. Um, we would, we were jousting last week with the paintings. We were like loading them, loading the pictures up with paint and then colliding into each other. And that was making some interesting marks. So that, that's where that one ended up. So it started off something like that and ended here. <laughs> and then here's another one. I'll just cycle through some of these. Um, and what, 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 what I find uh, is interesting is people will, people will come on and timidly, new, new people will come, come in, people who don't generally paint or make art and want to ex experience it, will come in and they'll make, um, very timid uh, uh, flowers or something and it, it'll you know and then it'll be time for the next person to come on and they'll um wipe it wipe it out and you can see it in the face of that person who put the little flowers in there they're like oh, okay well that didn't last that didn't work and they feel like there's the part of them that that they put into the painting is no longer there it no longer exists which is kind of true, right? I mean, it exists in the, in the picture, but in the photograph, but it's not going to be there in the end. And A, that's a great way. That's a great thing to understand and to a good mechanism to keep in mind that everything you do can and will be lost at some point, regardless of what happens. Um, but here we're doing it live and we're doing it kind of religiously it's like that's the point is to put something down and then allow it to be painted over but the what happens is the bolder you are with your strokes and with your you know with, with your applications the more chance that that this will this will be part of the foundation of the end result of 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 the image of the painting. So I think that encourages that encourages people to be bold and make these make these choices that are going to last and stops people from getting too caught up in details that don't really matter. And you end up kind of just sort of playing you know making really big bold like squiggles, you know, like someone just picked up the black and was like, "You know, I'm just going to squared this all over here <laughs> and it ended up looking really cool really expressive and i think like you know it's it stays it's st it sticks around I, I don't know i don't know if this still exists or not but i think i think it was it was cool what they did there was cool um and so and so that's 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 the effect that's what happens i think when you when you practice making art in this way either as an individual or in a group setting like this like introducing these constraints these pressure constraints that get you out of your head um get you 
underthinking rather than overthinking and making making bolder choices and i think like this what's cool about this is that you it ends up applying to your life you know you, you i, I love i love what making art does to my dynamic philosophy right it kind of allows me to let go in other situations too allows me to to, to or reminds me to not be too attached to an outcome of a situation and to enjoy the moment and to enjoy the sharing of the results of that moment you know um which is why which is really why i love to make art and why i love to do art jam like it's a it's a really wonderful thing that i thought was worth sharing today with you guys so that's that's about the end of it um for me um but i'd love to put out some or hear some questions if anyone has anything that they want to ask about um or we can we can move to breakouts i'm not sure how you want to go with that gina yeah let's uh, I'm, I'm sure people have some questions does people want to raise their hand or just speak up yeah, funny. I think you need to unmute yourself. Yeah, there you go. Um, what happens to the canvas after the art gem? Well, they, <laughs> right now, they're all, all the canvases that we've ever painted on are pretty much still in the workshop. Mm -hmm. So, one of the one of the things that is uh, maybe perhaps a little challenging is figuring out when something is finished or abandoned and because it's a canvas you can really just keep going with layers and layers and layers um you can keep going forever really um and so yeah right now they're just they're just they're just hanging out we would really like to perhaps auction them off at some point but at the moment or have a have a gallery show and try, maybe try to sell some, raise some money for charity, raise some for like an art jam, like event or outing or something where we go. We've talked a little bit about going to the desert and and doing something wild in nature. So that would might be a nice way to try to raise some money for something like that. Um, yeah. So that's it at the moment. They're just kind of. <laughs> accumulating, multiplying week by week. <laughs> yeah. Other questions? I mean, I would like to congratulate you, Nathan. It's like amazing. I was like really, really blown away, especially when you see the segments of five minutes intervals and how it just builds and it diminishes and then lays on top of that and as you said it still stays in the soul even if you cannot see it but it's in the soul of the canvas and I, it really touched me I, I i think it's you're really onto something it's it's it, it should be a new new form of art for for museums and stuff like that that's 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 cool i i love that you that you pointed that out yeah um it's it really is a very interesting way to make art i mean it not only does it take away an author of the art or like a single person responsible for it, which in itself is a strange idea, um, but the result of the art, like visually what, we, what you end up seeing is unique because there are all these different hands that have been on there to make it. And it's quite clear, often it's more clear than than ever um that not that, that this has not been something that someone has carefully planned out you know it's not an abstract it's not a single abstract piece where it's where it, it's it's cohesive and makes makes sense as a whole um and it's not a carefully planned out constructed painting either so you'll see like 
you'll see something that does make cohesive sense and part of the in part on part of the painting I, on its own you'll see oh like for this one like ob obviously this or it, it's not so obvious but it, 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 it's it's kind of obvious that the same hand did all of these circles right um but then you'll see something else in the background that just why is that there it doesn't make sense well, what what was the reason that, that was there and it's because there wasn't any single conscious being doing that. And that's amazing. I think that's amazing. I think that's like really fun. You just don't get art made at that level or at that consistency in that way. I think so, it's a serious competition to the NFTs here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been talking about NFTs a little bit oh, now. Yeah, this, 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 I see the awareness, I feel it intuitively. It, it comes, it jumps out, it's, it's, it's really amazing. Yeah, it's better than artificial intelligence generated. Yeah, it's group generated. It's human souls in a in a group. It's it's the oneness comes out. It's amazing. That's also an interesting comment, like the the artificial intelligence thing. So I've seen, I think most of us now have seen work that's been made by AI, and there's something about that work that does feel like it's like it's soulless. Not only that, it's missing an ego or perhaps the, the, the ego behind that is, is so algorithmic and you can just feel that. Which is like, I don't know if it's just because I know that it's AI that made that or if it's just clearly there in the image because yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if I'd be able to really distinguish it but I feel like I would be able to. And yeah, I think that this is, this is made by a Borg mind of sorts like this art we are this collective making this art together not being responsible for it and there's a collective intelligence behind it which i think is developing actually i think it's it's changing as as it as it grows as or as it as it proceeds sometimes there's a lot of people that show up and sometimes it's a really small group and depending on the dynamics of the group you know you you see different different kinds of different outcomes. Yeah. Unexpected things happen sometimes. Actually, Ricky had asked how many people attend. Yeah. So to answer that, I think the most we've had I think next week's going to be a big one or this week, uh, this Wednesday, because we're doing a bit of a, of a birthday party thing, <laughs> which we don't usually do, but um, I thought, why not? It's going to be my last one for a couple of months because I'm going to Europe. So I thought, well, maybe make the last one bang as well. So that's probably, there's probably going to be, uh, I don't know really, but there's probably going to be about 30 people that show up to that, I think. Whereas last week, it was a really small group. There was only, I think, six, seven of us who showed up. And that was really interesting because people were way less shy of course a couple of us were way less shy so we did some weird stuff and also we didn't we didn't stick to the time constraint so much and got more playful just got really a lot more playful um nathan i actually have like a short video that shows someone's some pieces that we decided were finished yeah. and um including the one that's ripped i'd love to share it if that's okay yeah let me stop sharing my yeah screen. i'll share it share my screen so this is um can everybody see that yeah. so this is the one that was ripped and i think we stopped at this stage i mean we could still paint over it but this was a bunch of that's a little loud um so that was one and then this was another one that i think we decided was close to finish yeah and then here's another one and i think this one we painted over this one is not there anymore so it totally, <laughs> totally doesn't exist does this one exist? No, I really love this one, but this one's got totally painted over. Yeah. This does not exist anymore. This is definitely doesn't exist. Because <laughs> um, I remember I was like, whoa, that one's gone. 
And this one definitely doesn't exist anymore. This one, <laughs> this one wasn't finished. We didn't declare this finished. The other yeah. ones we did, and then somebody decided it wasn't finished. And then this one also definitely doesn't exist. No, no. I don't know what happened to this one, but that was completely painted over. Yeah. And oh, here's somebody doing this one also doesn't exist. Yeah. Oh no, yeah. this one, yeah. I remember this one turned anyway. So that just gives you a flavor. That was just one week's sort of like, is this one done? Maybe is this one done? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, they they still exist, but they've just developed to something else. Yeah. Yeah, and it would be it would be cool to see all of them lined up. Like sometimes when it's a slow start, me and Meredith will or whoever else is present will get the all the paintings out and just line them up and like have a have a, a get a big overview of of them and we did that last week and it was really fun to see you know which ones were feeling really strong and which ones were less interesting and so we would then decide well let's put the less interesting ones or the ones that are feeling too chaotic or too much or too hard to look at <laughs> we put them back in the on the on the firing wall right and then go to town with them so it's a bit of an organic process in terms of like what you know how we figure out whether something is finished it's i i, I really i'm an idealist i really like the idea of always having them out and or most of them and if anyone feels charged to do something on one of them, then do it, you know, go. And then to have the, the qualification that needs to be set in order to, to decide whether something is finished or not, be that, be that, that this is so great. Everyone likes it so much that no one is feeling charged to add to it or to destroy it or to change it or in any way, because it's, it's, it's really working for everyone. I love that idea, it, but in reality, it's, I think it's a little bit difficult to, <laughs> to make that work. And, and so right now it's still early days. We've only been doing this for about on off for about nine months or so. I think maybe 10 months roughly. So it's still, it's still in the, in the phases of figuring things out. I, th I, th I think we, I think, I think we need to start like, shifting them do a show soon it would be really great to do a show to do an auction to do like a live like art jam that led to an auction of some kind so we'll see other, yeah. qu other questions yeah i just wanted to say that i have been at freeze week on february in la in beverly hills you guys know freeze yeah and i have to be really honest and this is genuinely I, that's my opinion most of these paintings you just showed spoke so much more to me emotionally than what I saw over there for like six hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> and they were like so disconnected. They were just so cold. This was much warmer. So I think you have a legitimate, you know, gift to the world of putting them up for you know just donation basis. You know, yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure that some people would, and you could buy from one canvas you sell. You can buy 10 new canvases and then later in hundreds or whatever. I don't know. I'm just playing around with some. I, mean, I think we were talking about also this idea of like, if we sold some for charity, you would get the painting plus exactly at all the images because um, Peter, somebody who goes, has been taking pictures of the of them every week. So you could actually see this whole process and that would be part of what you own because I think the whole thing is about the process. I was there last week and I was like, really love something I did. And then I had to take a phone call and I turned around and it was like gone. Like there was nothing. <laughs> you couldn't see anything about what I did. It was like, oh, well. <laughs> It was just somebody had painted. I painted this really beautiful purple thing, and then I came back, and it, like the whole canvas was red. Yeah, <laughs> it was like okay, I missed that. So you know, it's but it it is part of like okay, I just have to let go and celebrate what came up, and then kind of look at it and go, yeah, I kind of like the red. Yeah, it's all right. It's all good. So, yeah. It also reminds me a little bit of Nepal when I was there in the Buddhist uh, monasteries. 
they do these mandalas with sand, with colorful sand. It's an amazing, mind-blowing piece of art. I mean, they sit there, eight or 10 of those monks, and for weeks and weeks, they create this gigantic mandala. And then they just scrape it in the end. They like, just wipe yeah. it out. They're like, oh no. Yep. <laughs> That's yep. egoless. Yeah, it's like, it's like Burning Man, the city we build and then we take it down. Yeah. So, yeah. How can we get in? Uh, how can we get hold of you? How 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 accessible is this art lab? Jam. Well, we've been doing it every Wednesday here in the arts district. Um, where, is, where where? Downtown LA. Oh, okay. It's, I mean, yeah. I can, we can. Um, I can send out some information about it to everybody who's here because I know there's a lot of people here. A couple of people here from LA. So yeah. Welcome to come play. Awesome. Yeah, that would be great. That would be great if any if anyone's in town, come yeah. by on Wednesday night. Yeah. <laughs> come have a play or do it or set one up. Set one up yourself. Like you can you can do it with a small group. With doesn't have to be big canvases or, you know, you can tr you can experiment with whatever media that you want to experiment with. I would love to like branch out to all sorts of different things like sculpture and. You know, it'd be great. It's just, it, I think just these, you know, these, these constraints, uh, these constraints that you can play with are the key to having fun with it. And, uh, you know, and really, and really experimenting with like taming the ego through these constraints, mm -hmm. the group of some people, you know, maybe some strangers and, you know, feeling everything that you feel and talking about it maybe even putting it on the canvas, you know, as a way to express it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So yeah, when when Nathan was away for a few weeks, and Meredith actually led us, and we were using we didn't paint, maybe you can talk a little bit about what we were doing those couple of weeks and the material we used and how that went. And that was different. Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, we started with just um, drawing. And then we sort of realized drawing, we didn't have the ability to sort of like wipe out areas of the paper like we did with the painting. So then the next week I brought in like um, paper and we started, you know, just cutting out paper kind of like Matisse style. And then it sort of evolved from there. The next week we did um, collage and we just brought magazines and we just sort of, you know, you sort of like finesse it as you go. Like we found that when we did collage, we needed way more time. Like the five minutes was like, we need five minutes just to look through the magazines and cut things out. And then another five minutes to like work on the actual collage. Um, but yeah, it was really fun to, to just do something different. And at the end, what was cool was, um, we all got to take one home. So like, because it wasn't like we had to wait for something to dry or, um, the paint wasn't wet. We were able to like number them all and then pick a number out of a hat. And then whatever one you got was the one you got to take home. So it was like immediately giving back to the community that made it, which felt really good. Wow. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah, that's really fun. Uh, I, I love the idea of like of using collage and yeah, doing something. Doing I, like I think that in the in the early days we were doing sometimes we were doing like prompts around like bring something that you find from home that you want to leave on the canvas somehow, something that you want to transfer. You know, you can make that as deep or as playful and light as you want. Um, but little things like that. I think it'd be fun to bring some of that back into it, actually, at some point. Um, yeah, and then, and you guys also, you did, you did, we, did you do something in, um, in that festival? Oh, we didn't end up do, but we, we went to this, yeah. Yeah, we found, there was a camp called the uh, Sunny Mooners. And they just had little canvases out and they had like painting for everyone all day. And they had a huge box of paints and just tons of paintbrush. And it was just like paint whatever you wanted. There wasn't like a structure in terms of like rotating and working together, but it was just like painting all together all the time, all day. So <laughs> <laughs> it was really fun. I, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, there is definitely something about doing it collectively that um, kind of pushes you a bit more. And um, it it's, 
I don't know. I think it, it, it brings you closer to people that you would never have known, which I think is great. Um, and, you know, it's like more of a sense of community where like when you're just painting yourself, I think it gets a little, you're like completely siloed and um, on your own. Marshmallow, you have a question? Uh, it's not a question. I wanted to share that um, like seven years ago, we had, uh, we, we moved apartments and before we uh, moved the apartments, we had to um, paint all the um, walls white because we had like different colors on the walls and we said instead of like just painting them white uh the day before we handed over the apartment to the to the landlord we invited like all my friends i think 40 people came and the entire house became this huge canvas and everybody painted on the walls and you can start seeing like one person's drawing or painting sort of like compliments another person and when the party was over we gave everybody white paint and we painted over everything and they were over. I took some pictures before and I still have I, memories from that, but it was like like the essence of, you know, uh, leave no trace kind of, like let's create and then boom. <laughs> nice, I love that, yeah. It reminds me of like my house when I was a kid growing up because I'm the oldest of five kids and we would, if we got, if we got our hands on a box of crayons, I think it, yeah, it would, it would, um, it would get kind of messy. Some some of the walls in that house that I grew up in are still I still have evidence of of, of play. <laughs> That's great. So um, I had a bunch of fun little activities to do, but I know I see the time, and this has been going really great. But I thought we'd do one little connection activity, which is called blind portrait. Okay, so I want everybody to grab a piece of paper and some implement. Just grab anything that you happen to have, which I don't even have one too. <laughs> okay. Oops. Okay, so what happens is you're gonna have a partner. So I'm just gonna like randomly pair people up. Um, so Nathan and Mari, Marshmallow and Bunny, Meredith and Gregor, and Stephanie and Ricky. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you are going to, uh, do you guys know how to, um, how to pin on on um, on Zoom? If you go to the three dots um, next to somebody else's picture, so what you want to do is you want to go to the three dots on the other person's picture on your partner's picture and and click pin. So then your partner will be really big. <laughs> See that? Okay. So you got that. You got that pin. Okay. So then what you want to do is you want to look at your partner. And you want to put your pen on the paper and you can't lift your pen from the paper the entire time. So it's going to be oh. one continuous drawing. Uh -oh. And okay. And so you have to be looking just, you're just looking at the other person the whole time. And we're just going to draw the other person for one minute. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Everybody ready. Does everybody have their pen and their partner? Pinned. Stephanie, you look, um, uh, are you, are you there? Is, uh, cause Stephanie, we start? I mean, when do we start? I'm going to tell you when to start. It's just, um, a Stephanie's partner there. Okay. I want to make sure Ricky can see you. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So everybody can start right now. One minute and you have to be staring at the other person. Oh you can't God. be looking at your paper. <laughs> Oh Lord. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You're just looking at the other person. <laughs> uh, shoot. <laughs> Hmm. 
<laughs> you look don't down. Take, <laughs> don't take don't don't take your hand off the. <laughs> you look down. Implement. Keep your keep it keep it. It's so much fun. <laughs> okay. Don't pick your pencil up. <laughs> Okay, we got 10 more seconds. Okay, time's up. Now you can pick up your pen. Oh, no. so, so now what you wanna do is you wanna look down at your drawing and you wanna write your partner's name at the top of your drawing. <laughs> okay. Okay, and then what you wanna do is you want to write down, take a moment and write down three qualities that you observed in your partner. Oh, so take a moment and think about that just by looking at them. What three qualities did you observe? Ah. <sighs> I love that exercise. Me too. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, the exercise isn't finished. Oh. Once you have your three words, does everybody have their three words written down? Yeah. Okay, and now we're, you're gonna share it. So who wants to go first? You're gonna share the picture and um, you're gonna um, share the three words. Okay, you're gonna, you wanna go first, Nathan? I have it right here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Perfect. Let's look I, at that. And I wrote the words. <laughs> Tell us the words. Tell us the words. It's nature, calm, and focus. Lovely. Lovely. And who was that? That was Mari. Yeah. Nice. That was Mari. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Okay, Mari, it's your turn. Wait, you're, you're muted, Mari. Here's Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we have one of the Wait a second, I don't see it. How, how do we go back in the screen? I don't see you guys. Uh, go up oh. in the top and click gallery or speaker. Oh, okay. Click speaker. Wow, that's a good click one. speaker. You need to unpin the other person and click Yeah, I speaker. did unpin her. Okay. Okay. Mari, you want to We both are focused. <laughs> yeah. That's and fun. presence and amusement. <laughs> <laughs> But you both had focus. That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Um, Meredith, do you want to go next? You need to unmute yourself. Okay. This is mine. This is Gregor. I don't know how to say it. Great. Um, I said, uh, good listener, positive vibes, great energy poet. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely, lovely. Gregor, you want to go next? Oh, I think you're muted. <laughs> yeah, you have to unmute yourself. Oh, oh you cannot hear me? Okay, oh, yeah, yeah. Now yeah. no, you can yeah. hear me. Okay, yeah. okay sorry. Let's... I'm not a real talent. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Oh. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Not sure. What are your... Okay, the three talents were open-hearted, sensitive, and curious. Oh, Beautiful. Love it. <laughs> I love it. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. Can you see it uh, at all? I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can see it. We can see it. Um, Very good. Marshmallow. So I use my... Uh, I use my Photoshop and my mouse to do this. I was not looking at the screen at all, just at my phone, looking at Bunny. Um, and I wrote, she has nice hair and a smile. And I thought she was thoughtful because she was like concentrated and, and thinking about something. 
Lovely. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, and Bonnie, your turn. I think I misunderstood the, the instructions to not look at the this not look at the paper or what? Not look at the paper, but it's okay. Okay, because I didn't look, look at the paper, paper. and Perfect. I don't know. Excellent. Let's see. Wait, I can't see it. Uh, what are your words? There is a uh, quiet, introspective, and serious. Fantastic. Wonderful. And I actually, I'm going to also, since there was an odd person, I also did bunny. So I'm going to show, can you see this? That was yeah. my picture of bunny. Actually, that's a really good picture of rabbit ears. I love it. <laughs> and um, I said, kind, quiet, and inquisitive. Ooh, quiet. I've never been discovered as, you know, described as quiet. That's a new one. Most people <laughs> think, you know, when they get to know me, they say I'm more on the loud side. Well, <laughs> in the moment, I was feeling the quiet. I have um, a question for some of the, 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 the artists here. Oh, wait, let, let's just finish. We haven't finished the round. So, okay. Ricky... Ricky, your turn. Okay, here's Stephanie. Uh, and I have glowy skin, dewy eyes, and rose lips. Not Ooh. that you can tell from the portrait, but. <laughs> <You're good. laughs> and Thanks, Stephanie. Ricky. This is Ricky. Nice. Uh, nice. And what are the words? Um, I'm in the beauty industry, so I notice bone structure first. I think you have great bone structure, Ricky. Um, you have a very still energy about you as well. And um, I love the shadowing in wherever you're sitting. I just thought the shadowing was really interesting. So I mentioned that too. Can I see the picture again? I, I, I it went by fast. Lovely. Super lovely. Oh, cool. Nice. Um, so yeah, so I thought we could just have some last questions. Bunny said she has some questions. And then I just want to go around and um, just get some final thoughts and we, we can end. So some last questions, Bunny? Um, for the for the artists that like the, the what is it, Art Jam? How uh, do they, are there models that volunteer? How do you get your models? And then, by the way, I really love the plus size model drawings. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Well, for our jam, we don't we don't work with models. We just we're just doing whatever <laughs> whatever's inspired. Maybe we should get a model one day. That would be great. Or have people volunteer to pose. That might be quite fun. That's a great idea. Um, yeah, but for me personally, uh, being in LA, there's a lot of um, they the, the, in the industry. It's an it's there's a lot of like animators here, right? So they have to do a lot of training in um, in anatomy. Hence, there are a lot of anatomy teachers, and they. So this makes a culture of um, artists, teachers, and there's also a lot of actors, actresses, models, performers here. So they all some to, some do it full time, and some people it's a supplement to their income or an extra income stream. But there's a lot of models out here, yeah. So um, they're all over Instagram and they're all, all over town. And there's like plenty of um, yeah. There must be about four or five, six that, that I know of, just that I know of um, classes that are run every week. So you know, you go there drawing often enough. You know, if you feel particularly inspired by by a model. I'll, I'll go and ask them if I can work with them like privately or if they can get their Instagram so I can see when they're going to be posing next if they don't do private sessions, you know, and that's how, that's how it started off anyway, like a couple of years back. Yeah. But now I have like, you know, a, a bit of a roster of models that I work with, but I'll also, I also started drawing friends a lot more recently, just sort of hanging out and drawing um them and having a conversation that's that's also something that's free it's fun to do with you and a friend and it, and it does give you a little bit of pressure as well which i find is nice <laughs> in a way uncomfortable but nice yeah sometimes 
Wonderful. Yeah. Other, <laughs> other, other questions, last questions? I just wanted to add, we used to have that at the brewery that we had a model coming in and then they were sharing it. So the, if you have 10 uh, drawers or painters, then they were sharing the cost and it was nothing in the end. It was like six or eight dollars per, per pop. But it was also a good vibe because it's, it's what I like about it. It's the whole idea of group, the tribe, you know, the tribal feel to integrate that into the art. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So I don't want to take I know we're getting a little late, so I just want to do, um, first of all, thank you so much, Nathan. This was amazing. Thank, thank you. you so much for, for sharing about Art Jam and sharing about your process and showing us your beautiful work. And thank you, everybody, for coming. This was our first tribe get together, and I was a little nervous about it, so I really <laughs> love that you're all here. Um, so what I'd love to do now is just go around and everybody just for like 10, 20, 30 seconds, just say one thing that you enjoyed from this last hour, one thing you learned or one moment that you, um, that was, that was, that you're going to remember. Um, so who wants to go first? Ricky, would you like to go first? And then you can pick somebody after you go. With you. Sure. I feel like I got a lot out of this. So I'm trying to like, oh, what am I going to share? Um, I think that always the experiential piece is really fun. So I appreciated getting to do our little drawings at the end there and, and sharing with one another. Um, and yeah, I feel like the whole concept of the group artwork just feels very punk rock. You know, it's very just like, you just get up there, you scribble, you're not concerned about it. Like really trying to not be self-conscious and just be in the moment and, I get like so excited at the thought of that and then I get terrified at the same time. So I also like that it, you know, it's like brings up so many emotions just at the thought of being part of something like this. Um, and yeah, it was just really great. So thank you, Nathan. I appreciate it. And maybe I'll see you there sometime. Wonderful. And then pick the next person. And let's see. Um, Stephanie, go ahead. Yay. Um, well, I've been a Art Jam fan for a bit. I will say that the biggest thing I took away from the experience itself is that I am normally a very fearless, control-heavy person, and it shook me hard <laughs> because I was terrified and I also could not control anything. So I think what it did for me was really allow to let go and to feel like that would be okay if that's what I did that day is just allow myself to get a little dirty, allow the paint to look ugly, and it be okay. <laughs> and I'll pick a uh, bunny. Mm, I, you know, I've never heard of Art Jam, but since I live here in Ventura County, I'm going to definitely look into a lot of the art guilds that we have here and maybe pick up some paints. That'll be a new uh, thing for me to paint. I'm always painting my hair blue. So I might as well paint something else in the process. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, do you want to pick somebody? Yeah. To um, reflect let's... on what we just spent time on. Who do you want to pick? Um, I think my aphasia is starting to get in with this speech. Maori. Marshmallow, you mean? No. Mari. Oh, Mari. Mari. <laughs> yeah, when I get tired, I have I start having speech issues. <laughs> um, I yeah, I really enjoyed hearing about the art jam that I would like to check out. I think of the talk, what was most beneficial was just the reminder that like having a constraint really helps with your creativity um, to self-impose that if you're by yourself or with a group, I think can really free you up. Um, and I really like the activity. I, if I came to more of these, I hope we would do more activities. Yeah, I have a whole, I have a whole collection of fun little activities. Yeah, um, it was a good one. Mari, you wanna pick uh, somebody next? Um, Nathan? Well, this was the first time I've talked about my process in Art Jam and all of that with a group <laughs> in this way. I mean, like, we talk a little bit about, like, the Art Jam process and everything uh, every, every night that we do it, but um, this was the first time I jumped on with some 
some strangers on an app and like uh or on zoom so that was that was daunting but uh it was fun it was fun to kind of like reduce it down to to what i could get what what i could express in that amount of time and share it with you guys it was really nice to hear your questions and what stood out for you that's really important information for me so I appreciate that and thanks to Gina for hosting this and making it happen. You want to pick someone, Nathan? Yeah, let's go with Marshmallow. <laughs> um, I had no expectation, no ideas of what this would be. Um, and it was an interesting experience. I did not expect to, uh, to be asked to draw anything. I don't really draw but it was like interesting to uh, to try something, even though it's not in like within my comfort zone. And like the results were weird but cool. Um, and I'm happy I did that. So, uh, who who haven't been uh, talking yet? I don't know who to choose next. So, did everybody go except maybe? Oh, Meredith, you didn't go. Yeah, I'll go. Um... Yeah, I I love well, I love our gym. Um, I love going to our gym. I mean, I live in the building, so it's kind of easy for me to go. But um, I love doing this because it's great to connect with people who don't do our gym or like, can start our gym in other places. Because I think it's really easy thing to bring all around the world. Really like this concept. Um, I love the drawing and connecting that way with each other here today. Um, and yeah. But I guess, right? <clears throat> Wonderful. And yeah, I'll just end it by saying, yeah, it's been really I, I great to connect deeper with all of you people, some of who I know and some of whom I'm just meeting. And, um, you know, I love, I love creativity and I love being able to celebrate it. And thank you so much, Nathan, for, for sharing. Thank you so much. This is great. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you, Dina. Thank you all. Thank and you. Um, I just want to check. I'm going to put Nathan's um, talk on YouTube. If there's anybody who doesn't want to be in, like, if you have a question, just let me know and I'll, I'll cut you out. So. Cool. Okay. But Nathan, I also would like to mention that uh, it's an excellent subject for uh, festivals because I'm going to Boom Festival and Azora in Europe and I'm holding there my lectures for sex and ego death. Interesting, ego death and egoless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think it would fit perfectly into this environment. Yeah, yeah. We, we're talking about Burning Man too. Like what we yeah, Burning Man too. 